Hey, this is O. Welcome back to the channel. Feels great to be back. I've been very much at work, working on a lot of projects, and there's a lot of stuff that goes off camera that I work on, such as signage. And here's a short video clip here. This year is going to be a very important year for CLO Education TV and CLO Pixel Gamers. Years ago when I made this channel, it was all about learning how to make things with access to materials that you have around you. As long as you're determined and skilled enough to learn about different techniques, then money's not an issue when doing creative projects like this. If you haven't seen the video on how this shoe was made from scratch, Click on this video above. I'd like to showcase this nifty poster, one of my new designs. And this design was actually done in Inkscape. So if you would like to support my gaming channel, go over to CLO Pixel Gamers or you can go to clolearnshop.com. And if you would like to pick up this new uh, poster design, just click on the link below. Just in case for my new viewers, if you're not aware that CLO Design and Education does independent publications, we have two and currently working on a third one, one of which is uh, Mike the Inventor and also Circle Bringing Arts Together. And on Amazon, there is a current sale. If you type in the title uh, Circle Bringing the Artists Together, there is a sale on Amazon. And I believe this book is going for $6.75. So definitely, if you would like to support the channel, you can pick up either book. This one's on CLOLearnshop.com and this one is on Amazon. Today's video is all about making this automated pet puller to take things like this plastic spooling made from bottles and turning them into 3D printed filament. You will want to build something like this if you're trying to turn bottles into cordage and converting it into 3D printed filament that you can use in your 3D printer. So let's go ahead and check out how I assemble this thing over here in this clip. Okay, so these are the last two parts that I'm going to pull off. This one right here is the bracket A, and I had to print two of these because bracket B wasn't in the files. And then this large gear. So this is going to attach to the reel of the 3D prints. Normally I don't film the process of removing the parts, but I figured I'd show that so you guys could see. I always put a layer of glue stick on, make sure it has a nice adhesion to the bed, and that's just what I do. Uh, let's see, we can get it off, there we go. And just so you can see the actual size of this gear, it is huge, that's my hand right there, so that's the gear. So this printer does print nice large prints. Alright, let's get these parts to the table and see what we got. I just took an old rack from an old desk to basically use for my rod. Main thing is you can use any rod you got lying around for your spool. If you hear that humming sound in the background while I'm working, that is just my inverter coming from my solar. So that's kind of like a humming sound, but yeah. Okay, so here I'm just mounting the ends, you know, to clean up. And the better your cuts are, the less work you got to do in this step. So you want to make sure that you're cutting clean cuts on the metal. All right, just showing you. Okay, for your pet puller, you're going to need the various 3D printed parts here. I have the two legs, which includes the motor mounts. Also, I have a gear, small. 12 tooth ratio and then this is the 96 tooth ratio also you're gonna need an empty filament ring okay so just an empty one like this okay if you're curious to know how long these took 
Okay, these took about two and a half hours to print each. This one about, I'd say 20 minutes. This one about 30 and the big gear took about four hours to print. When I first started off with this glue gun, it gave me a specific result, which is um, here it was pretty good, and but it wasn't consistent on each end. That's because the nozzle tip is way too small. So I had to go ahead and pick up a bigger glue gun, also with a high low tip setting, so that should really help out. Next up, you're gonna need some kind of speed control. Now you can do this with a potentiometer, but today I'm just gonna use the trigger assembly from an old drill, which has its own built-in sort of speed ramping potentiometer. Now, I'm gonna share a clip here. This is an assembly to a uh, electro-powered kayak that I use, and I use these in conjunction, and actually the drill, the old drill motor I had for an old Harbor Freight drill, actually powered my kayak, but I'll probably make a separate video on that, especially with spring coming around the corner. Also, you're gonna need a piece of wood to attach. Okay, also one other thing I'd like to mention, if you don't have one of these motors over here, which I showed right over here, um, you can get an old drill that you may have and don't need or don't use where the motor still works. And bingo, there you see, there goes the motor right there. This one also has two internal batteries, but um, this is a way you can uh, upcycle or salvage a motor out of an assembly like this. You're gonna need something to cut the bottles with. Here I have a razor blade attached to a block of wood I turn on the lathe, but you don't have to do it this way. And there's a razor blade and I just 3D printed this assembly. And it makes the banding out of a, just a plastic bottle, okay? And also you're gonna need to choose a motor. So over here I have several different options. I'm thinking because this fits the assembly, although this is a little bit overkill, I'm gonna go ahead and use this, this motor in particular, okay? So this is the motor that I'm gonna use and attach to that warm gear. Okay, this gear was designed to have a more traditional reel that the 3D filament comes in. This is just one extra I had that was empty. And actually, I made an attempt to make some filament right here. And this actually comes from a ramen noodle cup, or no, I shouldn't say ramen noodle, but it comes from a cup, cup noodles uh, container. But I'll explain that more later. But I need to drill holes in here so that way I can put the zip ties in to hold these uh, gears in place. All right, so that's the next step. Okay, in this step, you really want to watch the drill because you can end up uh, drilling too hard and kind of whipping your hand around. All right, so once the holes are drilled, you want to go ahead and get those zip ties fed through both sides and just zip it tight. Uh, one thing I cut out, I had to readjust the zip tie so it would spin smoothly. So make sure the knot of the zip tie is on the inside and not sitting outside. All right, you're gonna do this as many times as you need until the gear is secured to the spool. And then you want to clip off the ends and you got everything secured how you want. And those are those knots I was talking about. Make sure those knots uh, stay on the inside of the reel. And yes, these will be recycled. Now you secure your skateboard bearings. Okay, I'm just marking the placement of both legs. You're gonna have to move these around from time to time to get the spool in and out for the right fitting. So it's easier just to mark it with a marker. All right, once you have the placement that you want, you wanna go ahead and drive those screws in. And 
you do your test fits. Make sure your spool looks good and it's spinning good. Now later on, I added some cotter pins in the rod to keep, to keep it secure. Okay, when I'm soldering, I like to lightly tug on the wires just to make sure that it's a good, secure solder. Here is the trigger assembly I was talking about from the drill earlier. What I did was is there's a battery attachment to it and I want to disconnect that just in case I want to connect something else to the motor. And so that was just a personal choice I did, but you don't have to do that. And what I didn't show on camera is I ditched heat shrink both. I like to crimp, solder, and heat shrink every connection I have. Now I'm fitting the gear on the inside all right, and put in the bracket where the motor mount goes. And I made a simple U-channel. It was actually a square tube, which I cut down the middle. And then I drilled four holes to secure the zip ties. And it's plenty strong to hold that motor in place. This is just to demonstrate that the assembly works. And we're going to talk about some things for the end of the video. All right. In video two, I'm going to show how to take cups like this and plastic balls like this and turn them into 3D filament. And what I'll be doing is printing actual products that's going to be a fundraiser for the CLO Academy. So there's three ways you can support. One, click on the direct campaign link below and contribute that way. Or when the products come out that are made from recycled material, you can purchase that way. Or you can support the channel directly by clicking on CLOLearnshop.com, liking, sharing, subscribing to videos, and supporting the channel. Hopefully when we get the recycled filament down to a desired quality, we can print some cool stuff. But guys, if you want to leave um, some things that you will want to see 3D printed with a plastic bottle or a noodle cup, just let me know. Leave that comment in the comment section below. Guys, always a pleasure. Always enjoy you guys supporting the channel, commenting, watching, liking the videos. And guess what? I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.